with the GoCurrency.com sports ticker. I'm Tim Mulhaupt on the Huskers Radio Network. Happy Tuesday, Huskers fans. We have another great show for you tonight, including visits from the birthday boy of yesterday slash Huskers Pipeline alum, Jeremiah Soros, and a taste of his latest edition of the Sideline Slice, along with a chat with Nebraska football kicker Timmy Bleakroad in hour two. In pro sports tonight, we have a lot of MLB games uh, just getting underway. A couple of games actually delayed. Uh, it'll be the Marlins and Phillies. Uh, they're delayed in the top of the first, as are the Reds and the Mets. So waiting on times for start there. Uh, just underway are the Blue Jays and Orioles. In five minutes, we'll see the Braves and Red Sox, as well as the Guardians and Tigers. The White Sox meet the Royals at, at 6.30. The Nationals will take on the Cubs at 7.05. The Rays meet the Brewers at 7.10. The Rangers will take on the Astros also at 7.10. 7.40, it's the Cardinals and the Rockies. The Angels and Athletics meet at 8.40. The Pirates and the Diamondbacks will play at 8.40 as well, as will the Giants and the Padres. Padres trying to get out of their funk as they have really been struggling to score after a bunch of big moves at the trade deadline. 9.10 p.m., it's the Twins taking on the Dodgers. Also at 9.10, the Yankees will meet the Mariners. Only one final from earlier today, and that was the Royals beating the White Sox in game one of their doubleheader 4-2. to two. In the tennis world, Serena Williams announced today that she views her career as winding down as she looks to shift her focus to building her family. Williams, who holds 23 Grand Slam titles and 73 total single titles, said she plans to retire after the U.S. Open later this month. Starts at the end of the month on August 29th. In the NFL today, Commissioner Roger Goodell called Deshaun Watson's behavior predatory, or excuse me, predatory and egregious in justifying the NFL's appeal of Judge Sue Robinson's six-game suspension assessment for the Browns quarterback. Goodell said the league will seek a full-season suspension in their appeal that they've already made of Robinson's decision. Elsewhere, Chicago Bears linebacker Roquan Smith formally requested a trade today, stating he loves playing for the Bears, but that he views the handling of his contract negotiations as the Bears' front office attempt to take advantage of him. Smith has totaled an eye-popping 524 tackles, 14 sacks, 43 tackles for a loss, five interceptions, 17 pass deflections in four seasons with the Bears. This update is presented by Currency. Does your business need help financing big ticket items like equipment, trucks, and trailers? Or, uh, Currency is here to help. Visit GoCurrency.com for details. That's the ticker. I'm Tim Helped, and Sports Nightly is next on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. In motion is Brewington. They snap it back, fake the handoff, looking to throw. They flip it out of flat to Brewington, makes a catch. Touchdown, Nebraska. Well, that looked easy that time. Brewington came in motion, and instead of cutting down the block, kept out the flat. Flipped it out to him for an easy six points. And Trees now sends a man in motion. They turn, they flip it off to McDuffie, trying to race to the edge. Gets around JoJo Doma, but can't get around Nick Henrich. He'll go down. He'll lose three yards. Back to the 23-yard line. What a play by Nebraska. It's caught. Touchdown. Omar Manning. What a grab in the end zone. And the Huskers have six more points. What a throw and catch. Yes. Nice jitter block move, and it bounced into the outside 40 to the 50 yard line to the 40, 30 yard line, 20. That's Grant, 15, 10, 5. He's in there. Touchdown, Anthony Grant with an electrifying move at the line of scrimmage, scoots to the outside and dashes it down the sideline. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Here we are back with another show. So glad you joined us here tonight on Sports Sunday. A beautiful Tuesday. Looking out over the construction, there's more and more beams and rooftops being put on uh, for the building that will house Husker Sports for the next quarter century or so as uh, we're getting closer yet to another college football season. Huskers practice today, no media availability. We will uh, talk to the offensive coaches after the practice session tomorrow. We'll have it for you tomorrow night on the program. Husker Volleyball began. In fact, they're in the middle of practice number two right now. They have two-a-days, so they had one this morning, and they're wrapping up practice number two right now. They did let the media come in and shoot some pictures of, of their workouts. They didn't interview anybody, but they were allowed to come in and watch them going out, going I, after each other. I feel like finally, you know, I feel like it's been a while since, uh, or we've been talking about them a while, and it seems like, okay, it's about time. They're on the court now, yep. and so that means it's uh, getting closer and closer. Interesting, and I think your theory is, and I agree, that I think if you see major improvement from those sophomore now outside hitters and Batenhorst and Krause, 
that could go a long ways in how good this team can be. And I think we all think they're going to be a Final Four type team again. A lot of focus on Kennedy Orr, and absolutely right. You, the setter is such a pivotal pos position in the sport of volleyball. But those outside hitters, when they played pretty well in December, that's when that team really got hit their stride. Yeah, and you know when we heard from Allie Batenhorst a couple weeks ago, and she had talked about maybe dealing with the pressure and a lot, it's, it's just a lot to get into when you're a freshman and those expectations. And, you know, she finally just let it loose and played a lot freer, and just things clicked for her in the postseason. And, boy, I don't know if they make the run that they make without they her don't. and so you know just the moments that she was able to provide there I mean just absolutely huge and I think she's gonna she learned a lot from that run in the postseason we'll be able to carry that over and so I, I also think um, Whitney Lonstein uh -huh. also she's also a part of that sophomore oh, yeah. class and you know she was uh, just a freak athlete that coach Cook loves and also a player that maybe you could see step into a bigger role and potentially add some depth and and because boy she was explosive at times yeah. so um, you know that entire sophomore class is absolutely loaded think about that Jessica a year ago those those three in particular they're trying to navigate where do they fit in the team because you still had Lexi and she was the All-American. You had Lauren Stiverance coming off the back injury and she wasn't available for the first couple of matches of the year. And so then they're and then they're back and I mean there was a lot going on with that team last fall. Yeah, I mean just with the Lexi son and her in and out and and once they finally figured it out, yeah, I mean I think you saw, but I think that's the beauty of you don't want to be playing your best volleyball at the Early. beginning. And so they figured it out and and worked it out and Lexi ended up being a great supporter and you know in a I guess reduced role than what she had been in, but it really did. It allowed for some of these young players to really grow and I I just I know Whitney was a player that Coach Cook talked a lot about. I mean, she was a three-sport athlete. This is the first time she's really focusing completely on volleyball. So, right. you know, I just I think that entire group, Lexi Rodriguez, no need to even talk about her, but Lindsey Krause, too, was also one that I think really grew into her role and gained a lot of confidence. And so that entire group is just it's going to be fun to watch them. Sure is. Um, one week from tonight, we will have our first volleyball radio show with John Cook. It'll be during hour number two of Sports Sunday, so put it on your calendar next Tuesday. Most of his shows will be on Tuesdays. They do have some Wednesday road matches, which causes us to shift the schedule around a little bit. But for the most part, uh, his coaches shows will be on Tuesday night. The football shows will be on Thursday night. And our first football show will be on the 18th. We will sneak a show in before we go to Ireland. We will not attempt to do a show in Ireland as best we tried. None of the coaches wanted to do a show at one in the morning, <laughs> Dublin time. Yeah, so. especially on like the Thursday night <laughs> Yeah. before the game. You want to go make sure you're getting your rest. And, and at sleep. a pub. <laughs> and come to a pub and do that, yeah. Because uh, r rumor is we might be uh, recording yep. some of these things in a pub. Kind of a sports nightly time of night, but over there, which is six hours ahead of where we are here. But we'll have, we will, folks, if you're going, we're going to get, we're going to keep you updated. We're going to have all that for you before we take off to go to Ireland. But uh, all that's still, still to be determined, but we will announce that as well. Uh, we got, we kind of broke this last night. You did. You were finding the SBG, SBJ Sports Business Journal article about the negotiations for the new Big Ten's TV deal. The Big Ten tried to kind of tap the brake a little bit today. They put out a statement this afternoon and said, we're not, we haven't finalized everything yet, but we we're so excited about where we're going with this thing. But ESPN tried to get out in front of it and put their spin on it, basically said, yeah, we're out. ESPN's out. Yeah, and um, that's what John Aaron ended up putting out that, you know, they're going to back out, that they didn't want to stick with the what the offering price was but you know and I just Kevin Warren has just been a pretty big he's been pretty vocal about the college football playoff and having more than just the ESPN involved in it I think it can kind of cloud some things when it's just ESPN and so you know he's made a major push that it needs to be multiple TV partners that are involved so you know and then but then the fact you add NBC and CBS, and they have tremendous already. I mean, their CBS already has the platform. How perfect is that? You just slide right into that, and their viewership. I, I would be curious to see where their rankings are, their viewership numbers are, because they always got the number one 
um, slot at with the SEC at that point. So their numbers are already there. That viewership, they know it works at that slot. Right. And so now you're just going to put in a really good Big Ten game. And as we talked about last night, there's more than one good Big Ten matchup every single week. So, and then especially when you add those U USC and UCLA, and then oh by the way, we're going to have a primetime matchup on NBC as well. And again, CBS, NBC, Fox, still in more channel or in more homes and I know everybody's kind of doing the streaming thing or a lot of people are doing the streaming things but as far as cable goes they're in way more homes than ESPN, ESPN2, ESPNU, all of that. No so doubt. it's a, I think an improvement in the deal and if ESPN didn't want to play ball hey we got people that do. Sports Business Journal said that according to their sources ESPN rejected the Big Ten's final offer. The Big Ten wanted a seven-year $380 million agreement, so you can do the math, seven divided by 380, which would have included rights to fewer marquee games. So they weren't going to get the A, B, or even C pick. They were going to get the D pick. And so the network, and I think rightfully so, said, no, we're, we're pushing back and we're not going to do that. The initial terms of what they're hearing for money from CBS and NBC, both are set to pay in the 350 million dollar range for their packages. <laughs> so 350, 350, wow. there's 700 million just with those two, and that's before Fox and BTN. And streaming. And the streaming part of it, which could be Peacock. It's kind of what we're hearing. It could yeah. be their part of that thing as well. So. And as the questions from some of the audience last night was, well, what if NBC's in, what's that do to Notre Dame? Well, nobody's really sane today, but you kind of piece the things together. You kind of feel like Notre Dame's and NBC are done. Yeah, I mean, that would be what you would conclude to because Notre Dame's not going to agree to play in at 2.30 or 11 o'clock every game, you know, and not have a primetime slot if NBC is guaranteeing that primetime slot to... So, yeah, I mean, you, it would make you uh, lead to the conclusions that, yeah, Notre Dame and... But Notre Dame is asking for a ridiculous amount of money just for that school, just for them, because they want to stay in the arms race of making the money of media rights. And right now they are pretty far off of where the Big Ten schools are heading. And so, you know, we've heard what they've been asking, and it's just kind of ridiculous for one school. And so, um, you know. And only their home games. I, and and I, I just think, too, I think, you know, with where college football is heading, it was just – Really, it's a matter of time before Notre Dame figures out where they're going. I don't. I just don't see them staying independent with where things are headed. I don't either. I think they're going to get their hand forced, and this might do it. So, my goodness, can you because, imagine? I mean, because, again, if you're talking about adding more games in the playoff, you're talking about taking potentially more non-conference games away, which takes away Notre Dame's opportunities to play the play good quality opponents right. because if teams are say and again this is all hypothetical but if you're talking about taking away conference games or non-conference games and or your conference schedule gets tougher and then nobody is going to want to play a Notre Dame team and and potentially take a loss or you know it's just going to make it very difficult for them to continue to build a schedule year in and year out with the way things are headed this was the Big Ten statement today the Big Ten conference is currently working with world-class partners to complete multifaceted media rights agreement. The overall constructs of the new rights agreement have not been finalized. The conference continues to have productive meetings with both linear and direct to consumer media partners. That would be your streaming part of it. We are committed to delivering unparalleled resources and exposure opportunities for Big Ten Conference member institutions, athletic programs, student athletes, coaches, and fans. Yeah, I think it's. Man, I'm so excited. Again, we had talked about that would be the dream scenario. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. If you're on at Big Noon and then on Fox and then you slide into that CBS. And, and you know, I, I've seen, you know, a little bit of talk about, oh, well, ESPN's just going to continue to push their SEC narrative. That won't change. They've done that. We've all, you know, been critical of that from the start. But the good thing is for the Big Ten is that they're going to be putting on three quality games that – you're a college football fan, you want to watch those games. So you're going to have three quality different networks, three quality games on three different networks that a lot of eyeballs are on that can push their own narrative. I mean, not saying that they will, but if you're talking and championing the Big Ten, you're on three different networks with three incredible games on three big-time networks. You basically own it from 11 a.m. in the morning until about 10 o'clock at night. You can just hop from Fox to CBS to NBC and watch Big Ten football. Yeah. It's a pretty good deal. And all of them are going to have their pregame shows and, you know, they're going to have their halftime shows. And so all those 
shows that you see ESPN having. That's going to be on three different networks. And so, you know, I mean, I not saying that everybody's going to have their own biases, but if people are worried about ESPN pushing their narrative, you know, I just they do anyway, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they do anyways. Uh, and now you're you're talking about having a platform for Big Ten teams on three different networks, not just the ESPN yep. ABC platforms. Jeremy in Texas says, hey, Greg, what's the average price for the Ireland trip? Hotel, airfare, game ticket. I won $12 in the lottery and was curious how far I could stretch that. <laughs> don't think that would cover it. I don't it. think 12 bucks will get it. No, don't think that would cover it. But, uh, I, you know, I bet there's some folks out there, Jessica, that are going, are tempted to go, do I, do I pull the trigger? I really, maybe I need to do it. Maybe I should go. Well, yeah, I mean, it's kind of a once-in-a-lifetime yes. opportunity. And, and with the buzz that is surrounding this football team and also the travel requirements that have lifted with COVID. You don't have to test to come back. Right. And, yeah, it's just, um, you know, you jump on, you jump on, and you get excited. And I think you, the more you get closer to football season, the more it's harder it, and harder right. to say no. That Kool-Aid tastes better, folks. <laughs> Every day we get closer to the uh, to the start <laughs> of the year. All right, here's what we have on the program tonight. Jeremiah Searles. You and Jeremiah taped another edition of his podcast earlier in the week. We're going to play a snippet of that here in a couple of minutes. We're going to hear from the kicker. Timmy Bleakroad is going to join us in hour number two. By all accounts, he's hitting the ball well, making a lot of kicks in practice. That sounds good to me. Music to all of our ears, right, folks, after the tough kicking game that Nebraska experienced last year. We'll have that for you in hour number two. And as always, you can be a part of the program with a call or a text, 402-413-2400. We're also up on our YouTube stream, and there's a lot of our folks in there uh, chatting, having some fun with each other, talking about college football, Husker sports, all of that going on in the chat room tonight. Our Sports on a Hotline brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime time with 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned you can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse back with Jeremiah next do you want your date to wait for your interlock device to let you drive your kids to ask why you have an ankle bracelet or your boss to see your criminal history do you want to miss important life events because of house arrest Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. How do you remember things? Post-it note, string around your finger, smartphone reminder? Whatever you do, remember Nebraska Pick 3 2x2 and My Day. Three great Nebraska Lottery Lotto games that are all $1 per play with drawings every day. Nebraska Pick 3 lets you choose your own bet type. 2x2 has a $22,000 top prize. And with my day, you choose a six-digit date. Must be 19, please play responsibly. Oh, got a reminder. Produced Nebraska Lottery commercial. <laughs> I'm all over that. Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic for better health. Why chiropractic? Because it is safe, drug-free, and a cost-effective treatment option for back and joint pain. Plus, all generations can benefit from natural chiropractic care. Choose chiropractic first for pain relief, nutrition, or to improve your mobility, athletic performance, or overall wellness. Make chiropractic your first choice for better health. Find a chiropractic physician near you at NebraskaChiropractic.com. Get your life back with chiropractic. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Thanks for calling Toyota. This is Jan. How can I help? Hi. Thanks for telling my family and me about Toyota's national sales event. Oh, you're welcome. We got a new RAV4 during the event, and it's been great. Well, that makes me happy. Right now through September 6th, it is the best time to drive off in a new Camry Hybrid, Tacoma, and more. So what are you up to? You know, we took the RAV4 to a great spot. We've hiked, rafted, and now we're exploring a cave. Amazing. You're inside a cave right now? Yep. 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 
Well, I'm glad the RAV4 could make it all happen. Yeah, my wife talked me into spelunking. I'm actually a complete and absolute amateur. An absolute amateur. An absolute amateur. Huh, I could have done without the echo on that. Toyota's national sales event is on. Visit your participating Toyota dealer today to enjoy every last second of summer. Toyota, let's go places. See your participating Toyota dealer for details. Dealer inventory may vary. Event ends September 6th. Lines up with a shotgun, claps his hands, gets a shotgun snap, looks right, throws right, passes, caught, short of the first down. Oh, what a play, made on the edge by Luke Reimer, brings him down at the 46, Nebraska will take over there. What a play by Reimer. Hey Huskers fans, tomorrow join us on Sports Nightly from 6 to 8 p.m. as we break down another Nebraska football fall camp practice report. Tune into your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. Every day, Central Valley Ag Cooperative works with our farmers to feed the globe. Embracing the cooperative spirit, CVA's innovative products and services in grain, agronomy, feed, and energy deliver world-class value to our members. Our planet is hungry. Together, we feed it. Learn how we grow agriculture together at cvacoop.com. Central Valley Ag, the official co-op of Husker Nation. How do you remember things? Post-it note, string around your finger, smartphone reminder? Whatever you do, remember Nebraska Pick 3 2x2 and My Day. Three great Nebraska Lottery Lotto games that are all $1 per play with drawings every day. Nebraska Pick 3 lets you choose your own bet type. 2x2 two two has a $22,000 top prize. And with My Day, you choose a six-digit date. Must be 19, please play responsibly. Oh, got a reminder. Produced Nebraska Lottery Commercial. <laughs> I'm all over that. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card, free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at fnbo.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. We're inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center. It's sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Tuesday night. When do we start packing? When you, are, you, are you a packer? For like a four or five day trip, which is what this is going to be. Will you do that a week out or are you like in the last four hours? You just. I'm a little bit of both. Because we're going to a place that's weather is so up and down. It's going to take a lot of clothes. You kind of got to think about, and I packed away some of my winter and stuff. So you got to think about bringing out some of the jackets and the rain gear. And yeah. so um, I don't want to leave, you know, myself in a bind last minute, not have enough time to put it all together. So I've kind of thought a little bit about it, but. Probably I'll do it the night before. Yeah, that's probably me too. But you're right because it does. It's we're probably going to see some rain while we're over there, and even it could rain during the game. So you better yeah. have some rain gear ready. Because I, I mean, I did ask, and I've. And they said it's just basically packed for everything. Yeah. It could be chilly. It could be hot. It could be rainy. Now their their idea of hot 75. Yes, right. You know, and their not, idea of chilly is like 49. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So it's all relative now. You're, you're, and they also say it in Celsius, too. True. So I'm like, can you convert that to Fahrenheit for me, please? Your phone will do it. Your phone, the weather app yeah, will convert. Yeah, true. But when know. they're saying it, they say, right. oh, to get to like nine degrees. I'm like, excuse what, me? What, and what other, did you pick up on any language words that are different there than here? Did 33,000. They don't say, okay. <laughs> they don't say they're THs. They say TRs. TRs. 33,000. Okay. <laughs> I'll work that into the broadcast. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes, every single player that has a tree, 80 tree, number 80 tree, Travis Vokalek. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Jeremiah wore a three. I think he was 71 when he played here. But you guys, he's continuing his podcast this fall. They're going to be fun to listen to 
every week during the football season, and you have another one that's been unveiled. Yeah, so Jeremiah was went to the fall camp, the scrimmage on Saturday because they had a bunch of former players there, and they had a cool reception afterwards. So he was part of that and, and got to see a lot of it. And so wanted to get his thoughts on that and do a fall camp update before we start diving into our every single week where we kind of focus on more so the game and the game prep. So wanted to talk about what's kind of going on on fall camp. And so, again, this is a portion of our podcast presented by Valentino's Pizza, the official Husker, or the official pizza of the Huskers. And by the way, he recorded this on his birthday. So happy birthday, Jeremiah. <laughs> happy, happy birthday, Jeremiah Searles and our fearless leader, Trev Alberts, both born on August 8th. How about that? I mean, I'm just... I'm so fortunate that uh, Trev gets to share a birthday with me. So you know, I'm really <laughs> excited about that fact. Apparently, Husker legends are born on this day. Hey, August 8th is a special day for Husker Nation. That is a fact. What'd your kids do for you? Did they do anything? Uh, they woke up super early, so that was really nice of them. Um, and then they proceeded to not take naps. So, yeah, happy birthday to me for my, my wonderful gremlins. <laughs> hey, before we get too far into football talk, there has been some talk. We, for some reason, the um, Harlem Shake video resurfaced, and people were talking about it. And the crew up here is convinced that you were the penguin at the front of the video, but you are saying that is definitely not you. No, that was not me. As much as I love to take credit, that was Broderick Nickens, who was in the <laughs> Penguin video. And I remember that because he used to wear it out to parties. So it was a very distinguished, like, you knew it was Nickens. When the Penguin sh showed up, it was Nick in, so yeah, that was Nick in. I, why did that resurface? That was I don't know de a decade ago now. It got brought up, and then we talked about it on Sports Nightly, and then the f people that were listening and watching on the YouTube stream wanted to find out, wanted us to find out for sure, and so I just had to bring it up before we got too much further. Yeah, but it, you nope. were definitely not the penguin. And I was not the penguin, unfortunately. Okay, well, you went out to the scrimmage on Saturday. It was kind of a neat deal. They had a bunch of former players come mm -hmm. out to the scrimmage on Saturday. How was that? It was cool. You know, it was really a good chance for me to kind of get first eye look at this team and kind of what they've been working on in the off season, what they might look like heading into fall, you know. So it was really nice just to get an opportunity to go and let's see what we've been talking about. So it was really nice. Got to connect with some old players. Brandon Riley, Cole Pensick was there. Got to run in some of the even the older time. The, the old players is funny. Coach Frost came up to us in the, uh, the lunch afterwards and called us all the young bucks. And I was like, dude, I feel really old. But, <laughs> you know, we were the, really some of the younger players there. Sam Hahn was there. So it was fun just to reconnect with former players and get a chance to take a quick peek, quick peek at what this offense and defense might look like uh, in Ireland in a few weeks. You know, how important is that to keep connecting all the generations of Huskers? And it was, it was neat to see you interacting with former players, but then all the other guys that, of different, that didn't even play together, how they were interacting together on the sideline. And they were watching, I know, up in the upper bird's nest type deal. But just it seemed like just a cool camaraderie just for you guys to get to reconnect in that way. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we always talk about it. Regimes will come and go from what Nebraska is. But you always play, and you always played for the guys that wore the end before you. And, you know, you'll always represent the guys that wear the end after you. And so you, it's kind of a really neat fraternity, you know, Husker faithful. Um, the nation is the best for the fans, but there's this really neat fraternity of former players where, you know, if you wore the end, there's an instant respect factor there for you because you grinded and you earned all of that, you know. So that's something that's really cool. It's a mutual respect thing that goes around from decade to decade, player to player. And it's just really fun to get around guys and you hear old war stories from when they played and you got to share a little bit of your war stories from when you played. And then you get to watch and talk about the young bucks and how it's not how it used to be and all the fun stuff that all this has been is like to talk about. Well, what stood out to you then in the scrimmage for what yeah. you got to see? Yeah, you know, so the number one thing that stood out to me is uh, there's a couple things. You know, I think the first thing we'll touch on is the running back room. From a room last year that really we felt had hardly any depth and really without Ramir Johnson was pretty much incapable. We'll call a spade a spade there. You start looking at what they've done to this this room in the offseason. You have Ramir Johnson. You have Grant. You have Ing um you have uh, Johnson, you have Yant, and then my personal favorite, Young Buck, A.J. Allen. 
That guy is going to be a special football player for this team. You know, the way that he moves, he's so natural in his ability, his vision for a young guy, and he's got a very quick burst through the hole. He showed a lot of promise. And, and you talk about guys popping off the tape. Well, he popped off the field. And so you could really see the way he went. And then the other great thing was getting to see – I'm getting to see our guy Irv back out there, Gabe mm -hmm. Irvin, right? I mean, seeing him back out there, he had a nice long touchdown run that he burst right up the middle, which was good to see some burst back out of him. And he looks back to 100% too, which is great because he had such a strong showcase there in the first few games. So that room looks like it's got its stable of horses that you need to make a run in the Big Ten. You got to have more than one guy. Heck, you got to have more than even two guys. So, you know, there's four guys in there that are going to be really fighting for a a starting spot in my opinion but it'll be a little bit running back by committee they all bring a little bit different um flash in the pan so to speak but i do think that there'll probably be one or two guys here that start to separate themselves as camp pulls on here listen aj allen has been a guy that stood out to me too i've said that to greg and and brought it up on sports nightly i thought he's looked really good but i think just the point that you brought up that there is some depth but there's also you got different running backs in there if you need somebody that's hard to bring down at the goal line you, you go to yant you need somebody that can catch it and make some things happen. Maybe you throw it to Ramir. I mean, there's just some different options, too. And in addition to the depth, you have different kinds of running backs in that room, too. Yeah, and you know what's great is with the redshirt rule, you can play some of these guys in four games, these young guys in four games, and still keep their redshirt. Right? I mean, you talk about uh, Johnson as a young guy. He is fast. He has a chance to go out there and do some really cool sm stuff, too. And then you talk about A.J. Allen. But also, you know, you want to make sure they get the exposure. That's the great thing about running back. Maybe they play one or two games in September, and they play a game in October, and then you play them a game in November, and then they still have the red shirt, but they got really meaningful reps. So you're exactly right. A lot of different running styles. A lot of different abilities and really just a lot of gadgets and tools that you'll be able to use as you work through the season. Well, you and I stood over there on the sideline for a little bit of it and not surprisingly to you either, but two of the guys that have really popped in fall camp that we've heard a lot about, Tommy Hill, Trey Palmer. I know those were two guys that stood out to you too and that was fun watching those two guys battle it out in a scrimmage-like situation. Yeah, I mean, you talk about a guy that you can just tell has that it factor at receiver is you talk about Trey Palmer. I mean, he is so smooth. He looks like Samori Ture running around, but he's a little bit bigger, you know, and he made a beautiful contested catch on Tommy Hill down in the corner of the end zone there for a touchdown. And you kind of got to see his, his run after the catch ability too um, when he caught the ball over the middle. So he's going to be a guy that's going to be really special. And you have to have at least one of those guys, right? I mean, we saw last year how the big play threat of Samori Ture really opened up a lot of this offense. So having a guy that can stretch the field like that, make the contested catches, and go up and get it against a cornerback that's having a good as camp like Tommy Hill is, you know, I think that's really good. The old adage, iron sharpens iron, is a true thing. So those two guys going at it every single day is only making each one of them better, and it's making our offense better, and we're going to really need him as a weapon. All right, and you said even going into camp, one of the positions you were really looking forward to seeing and keeping your eye out on was a defensive line. What was your takeaway on that? And not even just the line, but even the guys on the edge, too. Yeah, you know, I think that there's my first chance to get a chance to look at uh, our boy from TCU. and Oshan kind of Mathis. He, Oshan Mathis, yeah, you know, get a chance to see him in action. And, um, to be honest, he's a little bit skinnier than I anticipated. You know, I think that he is going to have some transitioning coming from Big 12 to Big 10 play. You know, that, that's a very different physicality type that you're used to, and I can say that because I played in both. Um, and so I remember that transition. So that will be a little bit more of a transition for him, but he did look really athletic coming off the edge and coming off and getting after the passer. And then you had Garrett Nelson on the other side. He had a very good day. He had a couple TFLs, a couple sacks, and, you know, I think that you want him. He's your leader. He's going to go, and the defense will go as he goes, right? You kind of rally behind a guy like that. Um, Feast is another guy that I thought played really well, and then Ty Robinson, right? So you're starting to see some pull away there from who I would have called the starters on the defensive line front. But the depth of that thing is still getting growing too. You know, you have Nash in there who had a really nice big TFL. Weaver actually had a couple flash plays. He is a monster <laughs> human, by the way. He is so big. So, you know, he's a guy that's like, hey, it's third and one, throw his big butt in there, make sure they can't move him. So, you know, some guys are starting to to flash there but you do need to keep developing that depth because you did see when the twos went in you know there's kind of a long sustained drive by the twos that when the threes had to rotate in a little bit there was a big drop off between twos and threes which is to be expected at the college level but you can't have it be that big of a drop off they need to narrow that gap between the twos and the threes and keep building that depth but i do think the starters have done a really nice job and 
Uh, as hard as it was for those guys during spring ball where they had like 60 linemen who were taking a million reps, you're really starting to see the fruits of their labor come through where all that experience and all those reps are really starting to pay off here in fall camp. Again, that was a portion of the sideline slice with Searles presented by Valentino's, a slice of home you just can't get anywhere else. What started with a treasured family recipe in Lincoln, Nebraska, has become a classic Italian tradition for 65 years. And that just a cut of the full podcast that is out right now on our podcast platforms and on our YouTube channel on Nebraska Huskers. But hey, people wanted us to talk about the offense. He dove into the offense a little sure bit did. and he likes the running backs and the depth in that room. And I think that's be definitely been evident here in fall camp. They do have some pieces there that are going to be good to work with for Inter coachable. Interesting pieces in that room. We heard from some of the players yesterday, some of the defensive players saying they're hitting the hole hard. They're harder to tackle. They've been impressed with that running back room. Yeah, and I, I just think Gabe Irvin was a guy when, so I got there late. I didn't see all of the scrimmage, but he came up to me and immediately was like, Gabe Irvin looks good. You know, which again, I think just you were so, if you were followed this team at all, you were really excited about Gabe Irvin and then you got to know him and then mm -hmm. it just is like heartbreaking to see him go out. So I think for everybody, it's just so great to see Gabe bounce back from that because again you just never know I mean we were talking to Brendan Steyer earlier today about knee injuries and how you just never know how you can bounce back from that so to see that Gabe the way that Gabe bounced back from that that was one of the things that immediately Jeremiah said to me when I saw him It'll be fun. I can't wait. Let's get this going. Only one more scrimmage for this team before they head to Ireland. They leave on the 22nd, the game on the 27th. Always good to hear from Jeremiah. All right. What would you hear, folks? What do you want to talk about? 402-413-2400. That's the number to dot us up with a comment or question on our Sports Sunday Hotline. Brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime with 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned, you can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. Back with more of the show coming up. Get your Ford your way at Woodhouse Ford. Completely customize your next vehicle and ensure that you are getting exactly what you're looking for. From cargo space to tires and even safety features, you can easily design a vehicle that meets all your needs. Plus, we make the process stress-free with three convenient locations and the ability to view all our inventory in one place at WoodhouseFord.com. You shouldn't have to settle, so start building your next vehicle at Woodhouse Ford today. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. During the summer of 2021, three UNL students helped safeguard cattle across the state. Neely Anderson, Tatiana Jones, and Ashton Commons developed secure beef supply plans that prevent the spread of disease outbreak. The plans protect nearly 850,000 cattle across our state and provide greater economic security for this vital industry. Lines up with a shotgun, claps his hands, gets a shotgun snap, looks right, throws right, passes, caught, short of the first down. Oh, what a play made on the edge by Luke Reimer. Brings him down at the 46. Nebraska will take over there. What a play by Reimer. Hey, Huskers fans. Tomorrow, join us on Sports Nightly from 6 to 8 p.m. as we break down another Nebraska football fall camp practice report. Tune in to your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. Greatness doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, focus, and dedication. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that because we put in the hard work and dedication for decades. And that commitment has paid off with award-winning customer service for your auto, home, and life insurance. Visit shelterinsurance.com and find an agent to help you choose the coverage you need. Shelter Insurance. We're your shield. We are your shelter. Get us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. At CHI Health Clinic, we believe health care should be personal because knowing your provider personally makes appointments more comfortable, more productive, and more meaningful to your overall health. Get matched with a primary care provider based on your personality and lifestyle using CHI Health Clinic's My Provider Match. Take the survey at myprovidermatch.com to find the right provider for you. Getting healthier starts by getting personal at CHI Health Clinic. You already got the hat, the jersey. 
maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t-shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card. Free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at fnbo.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. Save with low price lockdown from hy V. We've locked down prices on hundreds of your favorite everyday items. Prices are locked down for months and months on major leading name brands. The products that you like, the products that you want, and products that you'll want to stock up on. And all of the prices are locked down until we unlock them and lower them even more. Low price lockdown. Deals you can't beat anywhere. Only at hy V. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska is proud to support Husker Athletics. Having a competent teammate beside you makes all the difference when it comes to protecting what matters most. With the proven track record of dependable coverage, unmatched financial strength, and a prompt claim service team right here in Nebraska, that's insurance kept local. Visit FMNE.com to contact an agent for a quote today. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. It's time to amp up the fun. Now during the Ford Summer Supercharged Sales Event. Just move on up. Get great offers on select Ford vehicles, and you'll not only bring back the fun, you'll supercharge Just it. Move on up. So stop by the Summer Supercharged Sales Event at your Ford dealer and discover how Ford can take your summer to a whole new level. Not all models, trims, or features may be available. Contact your dealer for information. Just move on up. Let me grab my car keys and we'll roll. Are we still going to that new bar downtown? Yeah, it's supposed to be fun. Lexi, give me driving directions from home to downtown bar district. Auto correct. Suggest Uber. Pick up home. Drop off downtown bar district. No, I'm driving. Suggest the metro bus. Departing in 12 minutes. Huh. Point taken, Lexi. We'll grab a ride. If you drink, don't drive. Decide to ride. Brought to you in partnership by Anheuser Bush, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, and Uber. Back on our Huskers Radio Network broadcast center, sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres Solutions for every field. 402 413 2400, the number to dial us up with a comment or question, or if you want to fire off a text. A couple of texts came in in the last segment. Bill in Portland said, just like a caller said yesterday, I yearn for Smash Mouth football. Nebraska will run the ball, but believe in whip. He'll give us passing and will complement the run and vice versa. That's the thing about a, a balanced offense is the defense can gear up to stop something, but if you're balanced, you can go do something else, and if you do it well, you'll be able to score points. And I think Nebraska will have a balanced offense. Yeah, I mean, um, that's what we had talked about nowadays. If you want to go win a national title, you look at the last several teams that have won national championships, it is balanced between passing and throwing you've got to have both and I think that's what they're working towards and I think that's what this team is and hey breaking news Devin Drew is on campus officially posted on the Nebraska oh football boy. Twitter account nine minutes ago okay. big man on campus welcome to the team so Devin Drew folks is the transfer from Texas Tech he was a starter for the Red Raiders along their defensive line he'll add some much needed depth to that defensive tackle position which we talked about last night with Clips from Eric Chenander, where you have Ty Robinson and Nash Hunt Maker, Colton Feast, and Stefan Wynn, the Alabama transfer. This should give you a fifth body in there. That's pretty big news, right? That there. is massive news. And I know they were expecting, they needed that depth, and they were excited to have him on, and he had to finish some classes. I guess the way that Texas Tech did it, kind of in, I guess, is in blocks or something like that. Their, their uh, summer calendar ended last Friday. Yeah, so, um, but yeah, getting him in is massive and now he'll have to he has a challenging task yeah. ahead of we have no idea what kind of shape he's in right and learning this new defense and all of that but hey just a work in progress that you know eventually you're going to be able to rely on that depth which again you love to have that line change with the defensive Absolutely. line and so to continue to add bodies there that you know is proven and experience too, which some of the defensive linemen that are stepping into new roles don't have a lot of that experience. And no. this is a guy that's been battle tested and um, against some of the nation's best offenses at that. 
Jessica, even if he could go to Ireland and give you 10, 12 snaps. Yeah, he absolutely. Could take, he could take yeah. that. My, you would think he could be ready to do that in a couple of weeks. That's huge news. Man, we've had some breaking news come our way the last <laughs> couple of nights. Uh, last night it was about the TV deal. We did get a text. I think Notre Dame's going to stay independent and play at 2.30 on NBC. That's what I'm hearing on other stations today. The Big Ten would get the prime time games. I don't know what the NBC... I don't know what Notre Dame's package from NBC would be worth if they get just afternoon football games on NBC. I can't imagine that would be a top dollar deal. Well, here's my argument is that it's been reported that what Notre Dame wants from a TV partner and they want it to be somewhat similar, which is significantly more than what they're making now. Correct. And so you're talking about asking NBC to pay what they are paying, what in what Notre Dame is asking, plus what they're going to pay for the Big Ten, but then also if NBC is guaranteed to have that prime time, that night game every single week, Notre Dame's not going to be okay with never having a night game, a no. prime time game, because that's that's uh, the atmosphere, right? And that's how you bring recruits in, and everybody likes, you know, the, having that one or two prime time games under the lights, all of that. To never have that opportunity to play under the lights at home on an NBC. I don't think they'll yeah, be okay with that. I don't either. And if NBC's writing that big a check to the Big Ten, I don't know what they would have. I, maybe they'd I just have don't something think, There's no way they're paying for both, I guess is what I'm getting. <sighs> yeah, I don't think so either. I, I don't think so either. Well, we'll see. I mean, I think there's still some more dominoes that will fall on this whole deal. And again, as the Big Ten put out their statement today, it's not all done yet. We do know that ESPN has pushed away from the table. That ESPN has come out and says, we're, we're done. I also maintain, too, that where college football is going, Notre Dame, if they they might, if they don't join one of the conferences, might be putting themselves behind the eight ball in terms of getting to the college football playoff. Because again, what I said earlier, I think they're going to have a hard time lining up a full schedule because maybe they add a game to the non-conference. You never know. Then you're having teams playing in conference championships potentially to play in. That If the conference championships are a part of the college football playoff, which some people have speculated, Notre Dame won't be a part of that. I just think if they want to continue to be a part of this and evolve, they, they're probably going to have to join a conference, one of these conferences pretty soon. I just... I, regardless of the NBC and the money and all of that, I just think moving forward to be potentially set up to be a part of the college football playoff, I think they're going to have to join one of these conferences. 402-413-2400. That's the number if you want to dot us up with a comment or question or fire off a text. Take our final break of the hour and back to wrap up hour one next. Touchdown, Nebraska! If you're doing business in Nebraska, the best way to connect your organization with the excitement surrounding the Huskers is through a partnership with Nebraska Athletics. You can take your business to the next level by reaching loyal Husker fans through in-venue signage, digital and social media, radio advertising, and more. Got it! Join the Husker team today and email partners at huskers.com to learn more about opportunities to connect with Husker Nation. That's partners at huskers.com. Hey, Husker fans, it's time to gear up for the season. So let's do it right. Jerseys, hats, hoodies, and more. Shields has everything you need to show your Nebraska pride. Visit our fan shop online or in-store for the biggest and best brands in the game. You'll find the right gear to level up your team spirit with all the essentials for your pregame parking lot party. Shields, proud partner of Husker Athletics and football fans everywhere. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so hot. The air conditioner is out again. SOS, he screams and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. Triple B Feed has the products to help your cows thrive. Whether it's weekly delivery of consumption-controlled Lumix liquid minerals with protein or Redmond natural mineral salt for livestock or humans, Triple B has you covered. 
Let Brian and Brad Blahorn take some of the stress out of your beef production this year. For more information and other products, visit TripleBeefeed.com. Triple Beef Feed, helping you and your cattle. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Lines up with a shotgun, claps his hands, gets a shotgun snap, looks right, throws right, passes, caught, short of the first down. Oh, what a play made on the edge by Luke Reimer. Brings him down at the 46. Nebraska will take over there. What a play by Reimer. Hey, Huskers fans. Tomorrow, join us on Sports Nightly from 6 to 8 p.m. as we break down another Nebraska football fall camp practice report. Tune in to your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. A DUI is everything you didn't prepare for. You did not save for it. You did not train for it. You did not go to school for it. You did not raise your family or buy a house or get a job for it. It is not your life goal or a dream come true. You have planned for everything in your life. You did not plan for a DUI. Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. 402-413-2400, 402-413-2400, the number to dial us up with a comment or question or fire off a text. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Tuesday night of Sports Night. Any crypto in the YouTube chat room says, guys, I'm hearing you talk about A.J. Allen. Heard Jeremiah mention his name. What can you tell us about A.J. Allen? He's caught your attention. Yes, uh, mine and Jeremiah's, but I just, I think he just he looks so smooth out there and he's been getting a lot of opportunities and so is Emmett. i mean i've been mm-hmm. impressed with Emmett too um he's fast when he gets into the open field man he is fast and i just i think the they've got a lot of options there gabe jaquesian all of that but then you also think about building for the future with some of those running backs and as we've talked about potentially the four game red shirt role where you can get those guys some experience and some big games maybe you you know, stack it to where you have one of them in each game and, and rely on, because if the four of them, if you don't play them both in every game, then it's eight games. Eight games, covers a good chunk. And so um, give them some experience, but when you talk about the future, too, of that running back room, you, you like that potential of, of that young talent in there, too, mixed with what they already have. Emmett Sane was mentioned by Bill Bush last week when, when Coach Bush met with the media. Allen is a Texas kid. He was on Coach Applewhite's radar at TCU, and then when Coach Applewhite got hired by Coach Frost, he kind of brought him along with him, and I think that's going to be uh, – both those kids are going to be nice additions. I, you know, Coach Applewhite, I don't think, could be happier. I think he loves what he has in that room right now. Tons of competition. Yeah, I think he does, and I just – I think – that's what he says. He said that from the start. That's what he wants in his room. We heard Travis Fisher talking about that. You want to have that competition. And he's definitely got it. I mean, I think, I mean, again, just that A.J. Allen is even pushing for, yeah, for that time. many stats mm-hmm. in fall camp. You know, speaks volumes to what that, that competition is doing. They all can do something a little different. Ramir, I think, is going to be the third down back. He can pick up blitzes. He's a really good blocker. He can slide out and be in the slot and catch passes. He obviously can run the football. He did that last year pretty well. I think Grant might be the most complete. Gabe might be right behind him. Yan, I think, is a short yardage guy. You put him in there when you need a, a yard or two or you want to run some clock late in the game, he'll be tough to tackle. So they all have a little bit different talent. Yeah, and it's also good, too, when you think about just the toll that it takes on a running back if you just have one or two for an entire season. But the fact that you have multiple that you can call upon to not have to just put such a heavy load on one guy is right. so good to have. Hey, buckle up, put that phone down. That's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Great hour. Good to hear from Jeremiah. Again, that weekly podcast will be posted every week throughout the football season. Brought to you by Valentino's. We appreciate them and their long-time support of Husker Athletics. Next hour, the kicker, Timmy Bleakroad, will come on board. He's the young man from Furman. Was an All-American kicker for them. Uh, last year and is off to a great start by all accounts in practice sessions for the Oscars. He looks like he will be the starting place kicker for the Big Red. We'll talk to him. More topics to get into, uh, including uh, some things about Serena Williams that popped out today that the U.S. Open may be her last major tournament. She's ready to retire and head off into the sunset. We'll talk about all that. Fill you all in on the rest of the world of sports coming up next. Hit 
us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride. The official foundation company of the Huskers. Seasons change, but your land stays the same. You need the right solutions to keep you moving. That's why you rely on Acres Equipment, your premier John Deere dealership and proud partner of Nebraska Athletics. Whether you're harvesting, protecting your crops, feeding the herd, maintaining your lawn, improving your business, or letting off some steam, Acres has what you need to get the job done. Acres Equipment, solutions for every field. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. The university has a new undergraduate business and law major. Students majoring in business and law are learning to use legal knowledge to better solve business challenges. They are also gaining skills in regulatory compliance, financial services, securities regulation, and corporate social responsibility. Upon graduation, they will boost the state's talent pool in these critical areas of expertise. Lines up with a shotgun, claps his hands, gets a shotgun snap, looks right, throws right, passes, caught, short of the first down. Oh, what a play, made on the edge by Luke Reimer, brings him down at the 46, Nebraska will take over there. What a play by Reimer. Hey Huskers fans, tomorrow join us on Sports Nightly from 6 to 8 p.m. as we break down another Nebraska football fall camp practice report. Tune in to your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red.
With the GoCurrency.com sports ticker, I'm Tim Mulhaupt on the Huskers radio network. Happy Tuesday, Huskers fans. You just heard from Jeremiah Searles in hour one, and we have another great hour ahead, including a chat with Nebraska football kicker Timmy Bleakroad. And if you missed it, Greg and Jessica mention it in hour one. Nebraska football tweeted out just after 6.30 that Devin Drew, the long-awaited defensive tackle transfer who played for Texas Tech, has joined the Nebraska football team. Welcome aboard, Devin. In pro sports tonight, uh, Major League Baseball, a lot of games underway now. The Phillies and Marlins are out of their rain delay. Philadelphia has the one nothing lead there. That one's in the top of the second. In the bottom of the third, the Orioles lead the Blue Jays. The Orioles staying red hot, up 2-1 over the Blue Jays in that one, and that one's in the bottom of the third. Bottom of the third as well, the Braves lead the Red Sox 4-2. The top of the first, this game was also in a delay. Mets and Reds are underway, but they are scoreless. They have two outs there just, uh, just in the last 10 minutes that game got started. Bottom of the fourth, Guardians and Tigers are scoreless. Top of the third, the White Sox lead the Royals one to nothing. And top of the first, just underway, the Nationals and Cubs are scoreless in a few minutes. The Rays and Brewers will meet in Milwaukee. The Rangers and Astros in Houston. And then at 740, the Cardinals meet the Rockies. That's in Denver or out in Colorado. Uh, it'll be 840 for the Angels taking on the Athletics, as will the Pirates and Diamondbacks also get started at 840. Another 840 game. The Giants are in San Diego. Padres trying to figure out how to score. They've been held scoreless for the last 23 innings after they made all of those big trade, uh, excuse me, trade deadline additions. Their offense needs to get it going. 9:10 p.m. It'll be the Twins meeting the Dodgers. Also at 9:10, the Yankees play the Mariners. And then one final earlier today in Game One of their doubleheader, the Royals bested the White Sox four to two. In the tennis world today, Serena Williams announced today that she views her career as, quote, winding down as she looks to fo uh, shift her focus to building her family. Williams, who has 23 Grand Slam titles and 73 total singles titles, says she's uh, looking at the U.S. Open uh, later in this month as potentially her last event before she retires. In the NFL today, Commissioner Roger Goodell called Deshaun Watson's behavior predatory and egregious in justifying the NFL's appeal of Judge Sue Robinson's six-game suspension assessment handed out to the Browns quarterback earlier in the month. Goodell said the league will seek a full-season suspension uh, in the appeal that they made of Robinson's decision on Watson. Elsewhere, Chicago Bears linebacker Roquan Smith formally requested a trade today, stating that he loves playing for the Bears, but he views the handling of his contract negotiations as the Bears front office attempting to take advantage of him. Smith has totaled an eye-popping 524 tackles, 14 sacks, 43 tackles for loss, five interceptions, and 17 passes defended in just four seasons with the Bears. This update is presented by Currency. Currency makes financing quick, easy, and secure for heavy machinery, ag equipment, trucks, trailers, and more. Visit GoCurrency.com for details. That's the ticker. I'm Tim Mulhelm, and Hour 2 of Sports Nightly is next on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. In motion is Brewington. They snap it back, fake the handoff, looking to throw. They flip it out of flat to Brewington, makes a catch. Touchdown, Nebraska. Well, that looked easy that time. Brewington came in motion, and instead of cutting down the block, kept out the flat, flipped it out to him for an easy six points. And Trees now sends a man in motion. They turn, they flip it off to McDuffie, trying to race to the edge. Gets around JoJo Doma, but can't get around Nick Henrich. He'll go down. He'll lose three yards back to the 23-yard line. What a play by Nebraska. It's caught. Touchdown. Omar Manning. What a grab in the end zone. And the Huskers have six more points. What a throw and catch. Yes. Nice jitter block move, and it bounced into the outside 40 to the 50 yard line to the 40, 30 yard line, 20. That's Grant, 15, 10, 5. He's in there. Touchdown, Anthony Grant with an electrifying move with the line of scrimmage, scoots to the outside and dashes it down the sideline. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. I know it's only Tuesday, but I have my winner for the week. What? Did you see the thing from the Little League World Series baseball game today? Yeah. The Oklahoma team yes. was playing the Texas team. The Texas pitcher hit the Oklahoma batter in the head. He was wearing his helmet. The pitcher was just 
despondent. And the batter who got hit by the pitch went over and gave him a hug. Yes, it was awesome. It, it blew up my Twitter feed today. It was a bunch of people tweeting about it. It was awesome. I Claire, love I'm done. That's it. I'm my winner's name <laughs> on Tuesday. Cheater. You cheater. I just grabbed it before you guys could because I always go last, so I have to. I already had it liked in my Twitter feed so that I can remember <laughs> to go back to it. It could be my weekend or my week winner on Friday. What a great example of sportsmanship. I mean, every they should show every professional athlete in every sport that video and go, that's how you play the games. Yeah, and just in, you know, hey, you're doing just great is what the kid told him. And, man, because that kid was shook and to be a pitcher and to bounce back from that. And, yeah, I love that. That's hard. And, hey, at that level, there's hit batters are a big part of the game. Kids, the pitchers don't have a lot of control yet. They get yes, the balls yeah. get away from them. It's, it's hard to do that. But that was just so touching to see that happen earlier today. Cool stuff. Uh, in fact, both ESPN and ESPN2 tonight are having Little League World Series action going on. Which they've done such a good job. They did it last year with a team from Nebraska that yeah. made the big Carney run. Or Hastings. They, Hastings, uh, you know, they show it every year. I think it's awesome. And gosh, I mean, what kids, how, how awesome is that for little kids to be like, yeah, I'm on ESPN. I'm nine years old, you know? Pretty cool. 402 413 2400, the number if you want to be a part of hour number two of Sports Island here on a Tuesday night. Huskers practice today, but no media availability. They will practice tomorrow. We will hear from Mark Whipple, some of the offensive players, coaches tomorrow. So we'll get their kind of take on Saturday's scrimmage. We heard from the defense yesterday and got their side of things. We'll hear what the offense has to say uh, tomorrow when we hear from Coach. Whipple. Then they'll be off on Thursday as they do this three practices, day off, three practices, day off, which I think is pretty interesting. I think they feel like they've really kept the guys fresh through two plus weeks of camp. Yeah, and you heard some of the old heads. Jeremiah asked him about it. Three and A's, Brendan, two and A's. you know, yeah, they're, they're like, ah, they got it easy, but they are here all day. They are. I mean, you and I will leave here from the studio at 15, 830, and those guys are. They've been here since however, whatever time they get here in the morning. They get here like at 7 a.m. Yeah, and then they're leaving at like 9 yeah. at night. And so they're here all night and all day and diving into the playbook and going to practice and all of that. Like, they are all football right now all the time. No school yet, which helps because you don't have to worry about that part of it for another two weeks and then school will get cranked up. But again, knock on wood, healthy right now, you know? They I are. mean, and there's a lot of teams that in fall camp you get dealt with some big time blows and so you know the fact that you rotate it like this and maybe helps the injury factory uh, factor of it too no doubt you broke this news last hour that the husker football twitter account tweeted out big man on campus devin drew is here devin drew is the texas tech transfer defensive lineman who uh, committed to nebraska announced that he was going to transfer over to the huskers a couple of months ago but he needed to take another class at tech to get cleared academically their class session their summer session ended on the fifth which was last friday he got it passed took care of all that got his transcript sent to lincoln has been officially cleared and he is in, as they said, big man on campus. Big man on campus. And, you know, again, much needed, just that depth, being able to have the rotation there, the defensive line. And I know they're excited to, to get him on campus. And who knows how much he can be out on the field right away, but a work in progress and eventually going to be a big help to that room and, and adding that depth to that defensive line. And, being able to do that line change and stay fresh up there. No doubt. It was huge last year. They really had oh, a nice yes, rotation yes. where guys never really got winded very much because they could bring in Ty Robinson or Nash Huttmacher or some of those people. And Ben Steely was. Did you see Ben Steely doing the worm? N what? No did way. Did you see that, guys? No. Yeah, the Dolphins tweeted it out last Friday, maybe. Ben Steely was down doing the worm. How Which is that is kind nobody's of a, weekend winner? A dance move. I, I Maybe it happened over the weekend. If you go find the Dolphins account, you'll see Ben Stilley. Of I, all I people, don't believe doing it. the worm. I, I'm going to find it in the break, but I don't believe you. I would not lie about it. <laughs> How could I make something like that up? I couldn't do it. Andrew will find it. He, True. I mean, of all the ben Stilley. of all the dances you could have come up with, the worm, I don't know. I mean, so. Yeah. He was doing I'll, it. But I'll believe it when I see it. All right. We'll, we'll look that up. I do want to go back. So when you were talking about the sportsmanship, yeah. Dave Portnoy, who is the... Barstool? Yes. He quote tweeted it and said, this is not good sportsmanship. It's dumb. You got this kid on the ropes and he's rattled. 
Trip the Williams for online. You can play patty cakes after. As far as the pitcher goes, that's your plate. Oh, come on. That's an awful take. Right? Huh. I that's mean, bad. yeah, he's getting blown up for it, too. Should. Rightfully yes. so. Terrible. That's, that's terrible. All right. Um, kickers. We heard from Bill Bush last, I think, Friday. You had a chance to see Timmy Bleak Road, who we talked to when he got on campus in May. Nether Transfer Portal Edition kicked at Furman last year. Are they the pal Paladins? <laughs> Paladins. That's their mascot. Yeah, and remember he told us what it was, and I kind of, it was like they ride out on a horse and they're in full, like, night gear, yes. I think. I think that's right. And, so, really, and he felt really sorry for them because they're, it's really hot. He goes from a pretty unique nickname to a pretty unique nickname. There's no other Cornhuskers out there. But FCS, All-American kicker, Bill Bush said the key to when he graded these kickers and were looking for kickers in the portal was accuracy, 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 and Timmy was at the top of his list for that. And you had a chance to catch up with him the other day. Yeah, so right after practice, just... Um, you know, because the first time we talked to him, he didn't go through spring ball. So now that he's been out on the field again with a guy like Bill Bush, who was a big part of why he wanted to come here. So uh, catching up on all things fall camp with Timmy Bleak Road. All right. Well, how is fall camp going for you? Uh, it's going well. Uh, we've been getting some good work on special teams, which has been good. Working with Brian as the punter, he's been doing real well this, this camp and uh, everyone else too. So it's been good. We talked to you and you'd just been here like I think a couple of days. How are you settling in? How are you like in Lincoln? Yeah, it's good. Um, I love it here. Right now during camp, we're not doing too much other than being here at the facility. So, but um, I've liked the facility. I love getting to meet all the guys on the team. They're all, they're all really good people. So it's been good so far. Take us through what a fall camp is like for the kicking team and the kicking units, and and how you guys go about what you need to accomplish in a fall camp. Mm -hmm. So, um, we usually have a pawn or a kickoff period. And uh, Coach Bush really emphasizes every rep is a game rep, so we have to take that mentality. And then we usually do score team every day, which is field goals. And um, like I said, everything's a game rep, so we're, trying, we're locking in just like it's a game day. And um, we've been getting good work t overall in each phase, so that's been really well for us. You mentioned uh, working with Brian, and he's also a new guy. Bushidi, how has that relationship gone between you guys? Because it seemed like you know, that, that's a close unit, and you guys do a lot of work together. Yeah, it's good. Uh, I was just saying over there, he's a, well, probably the hardest worker I've ever met. He's always doing stuff. On the field, if he's not if he's not kicking, he's doing something to help his punting form or whatever, holding form or anything. So, it's been really good working with him, and his his hard work is showing right now. So, what about the unit around you, your holder, the snapper, all of that? How is that coming along? It's been good. Uh, we worked a lot in the summer, just in the operation, and um, I feel as comfortable as ever right now during camp and field goal and punt. So, it's it's really good for us. How do you guys go about that? I mean, just getting a feel for each other and what you like to do. What, how, what's that process like? It just comes down to uh, reps. I mean, we just got to get out there and uh, get snaps in, get holes in, get kicks in. And I mean, it's it's come a long way because I remember at the beginning it wasn't the best, but Brian's gotten real good with spinning laces around, getting them straight ahead, and the snappers have gotten better with just starting out with the laces out anyway. So every time I feel really comfortable that the laces are going to be out, holes are going to be there, tilted right correctly. So it's good. I think that the, when we talked to you back in May, you hadn't even kicked out in the stadium yet or on the field. So how you like in being out there in Memorial Stadium? It's awesome. I, I can't wait to kick out there with fans. But um, it's been going good. We have uh, we try and get out there each day and get some punts and field goals in there as a whole team, just live reps, and it's been going well. And you had really liked Coach Bush and was a big part of why you came here. What's it been like working with him, actually getting out on the field and working with him? Yeah, it's good. Um, he, he has a routine every day for us, which is really good. Um, he holds us to very high expectations and high standards, which I think is really good for us because if we fall short, I mean, yes, it happens, but he holds us to such high standards we don't like to fail anymore. And uh, it's locking us in. Every rep's a game rep, and I think it's, that mentality has helped the whole special teams unit as a whole. One thing that um, everything, everybody says about him is detail-oriented. How have you seen that? Is he pretty detail-oriented? Yeah, he's very detail-oriented. Um, special teams meetings, he's always working on Every time we don't just go straight to a whole unit, he's working on something with the footsteps of somebody or just something. He's, everything has a process that we've been doing, and um, he, he's, he's really good. Just overall, how much have you enjoyed being part of this team and not just the special teams, but, the, but this group overall, how much fun has it been to be a part of it? I love it. Um, everyone in the locker room, we all, we're all getting along, and it's a... Uh, there's a lot of competition, but I think that's healthy for the locker room, and I, everyone, it's, it's just really fun in there. I mean, I, I don't, there's not one person on the team I don't like, so 
it's been really good. And last thing, just what's the goal now? I mean, you are a full week into camp. I mean, pretty soon you'll get it, start getting into game prep and all of that. What's the goal for your unit and the special team? Um, for field goal unit, it's just make every kit, but we got we got to go one one for one each time we go out there. And we're always focused on the current rep, not the future reps, not the previous reps, just the current one. And I think that's going to apply to the whole team in, in general. Just everything we're doing, we're doing it one, one step at a time. Thanks for your time. Thank you. There it is again, Greg. A broken record with this team. <laughs> but I, my big takeaway, though, is hearing what Brian Buschini is doing for the kicking unit and, you know, having an, a role in the field goal, hold, being the holder and all of that. It's just, um, you know, he's, he's one of those guys that has stepped into that leadership role and has... A, you know, a stepped right into it and has been comfortable in it, and guys are looking to him in that group as the leader of that group. He's the older man of the group. He's a couple of years older than the rest Married, of the guys. Married, has, yep. you know, all the... And looks like he'll be the holder. That's what Bill Bush said last week. Looks like Brian will hold for Timmy, and first kick of the year will be big. Make that first one, you feel good. Well, even just hearing Bushy at, when he had the punt at the spring game and the roar that Huge that roar. got. But, you know, you heard him talk about how Brian just was so meticulous about the first time they were starting to go through it and it wasn't very good, but he worked at it. So it's just the same way he's working on his punting and all of that, like he wants to make sure that he is meticulous to a T about getting that hold right for Timmy. And so, um, you know, it's an important unit. I know everyone is just absolutely intrigued to see how that entire group comes out and I think they're they all seem to be really accepting of they know what the history is and yep. the pressure and all of that and they're not thinking about that but I, I like their approach to it not thinking about any of it just uh, coming in to do their job and being thankful for having the opportunity to do their job. Grass field to start. That's what Aviva Stadium is, grass surface. And he's been. It's a mixture the... between artificial and real a glass. A mixture? Yes. Yes. Huh. I did not it's, know. Yes. How do you do that? I don't know. I, I'll have to pull up one of the other interviews. To, but it's definitely it's a mix between real, gla huh. real grass and artificial turf. And they just resurfaced it okay. here in July. So this will be the first game that they played there in Aviva Stadium. On right. that, on that surface, it'll be cool. Bill Bush brought in a couple of former Husker kickers who kicked in the NFL to work with Timmy and the kickers this summer. Alex Henry lives in Omaha. Brett Maher, who is living back in Lincoln, but got signed yesterday by the Cowboys. So Maher's in the Cowboys camp right now. And then Sam Cook, who retired as the punter for the Ravens in the off season, he does not live around here. But uh, congrats to Bill Ma Brett Maher being signed by the Cowboys. Uh, earlier today. You have now checked out video evidence of Ben Stilley doing the worm. Yes, and we have retweeted it on our Huskers Radio Network account. I'm sure Nick Burkhardt is like, what is going on? Who is retweeting from the Huskers Radio Network account? But if anybody is listening and wants to see it, we have it retweeted. And you're not, you're, you're not I, getting I don't, very good I grades. don't know. It needs to be more flexible of a worm. You know, a worm is like arch back all the way down it's he's kind of like just doing a bunch of push-ups but again maybe it's the camera angle but I'd like to see a little bit more flexibility in the worm just not that to, I can do it not that I'm an expert Ben who's a pretty <laughs> reserved guy try that right exactly that's that's first of all why I didn't believe you is Ben silly of all people to, to do that but yeah Good for him. There you go. Who, who brought down the loudest roar from their NFL team? Samori Toure doing the Lambo Leap or Samori. Ben Stilley doing the worm? Because the worm was just, <laughs> they, that was at their practice facility, which is a, where the where Samori did it in Lambo. They had an open practice at yeah. night under the lights, and Samori did that. I'm hearing good things about Cam Taylor Britt's camp, that it's going well. JoJo Dolman's making plays. Jeremiah said Austin Allen is doing well. Great. So it seems like. You know, all the group that went last year are doing big things, and we'll see how it continu continues to evolve as camp rolls on and we get into some preseason games. That starts this weekend. Yes. Full, full Let's boat go. of games. Yeah, it's going to be fun to do that. All right, phone lines, text lines, wide open for you. 402-413-2400. Our Sports Nightly Hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime with 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. More of the show coming up next. Momentum. It's building at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln with game-changing work in precision agriculture, nanoscience, 
and digital humanities. We're unlocking mysteries in brain research, solving the impossible with remote surgery using robots, and we're creating bold futures with world-leading research in early childhood education. We don't slow down, and we're not letting up. We are Nebraska. Lines up with a shotgun, claps his hands, gets a shotgun snap, looks right, throws right, passes, caught, short of the first down. Oh, what a play made on the edge by Luke Reimer. Brings him down at the 46. Nebraska will take over there. What a play by Reimer. Hey, Huskers fans. Tomorrow, join us on Sports Nightly from 6 to 8 p.m. as we break down another Nebraska football fall camp practice report. Tune in to your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. The Mazda lineup of SUVs will provide safety, performance, and capability on your journey ahead. From the three-row Mazda CX-9 to the first-ever Mazda CX-50, our sales team is ready to guide you to the SUV for your lifestyle. Shop the Omaha Metro's exclusive Mazda dealers at Woodhouse Mazda in Bellevue or Woodhouse Place Mazda. Visit us online for your next Mazda SUV at woodhousemazda.com. Seasons change, but your land stays the same. You need the right solutions to keep you moving. That's why you rely on Acres Equipment, your premier John Deere dealership and proud partner of Nebraska Athletics. Whether you're harvesting, protecting your crops, feeding the herd, maintaining your lawn, improving your business, or letting off some steam, Acres has what you need to get the job done. Acres Equipment, solutions for every field. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Did you ever buy something and get more, more than you expected? Emeritus offers insurance, employee benefits, and financial services, but we deliver so much more. The comfort of a human voice when you need it, the confidence of flashing a beautiful smile, the relief that your family can keep living the life they love, the serenity of knowing you've planned well and can enjoy life. That's what we really deliver. We call it fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services, and much more. How do you remember things? Post-it note, string around your finger, smartphone reminder? Whatever you do, remember Nebraska Pick 3 2x2 and My Day. Three great Nebraska Lottery Lotto games that are all $1 per play with drawings every day. Nebraska Pick 3 lets you choose your own bet type. 2x2 has a $22,000 top prize. And with my day, you choose a six-digit date. Must be 19, please play responsibly. Oh, got a reminder. Produced Nebraska Lottery commercial. <laughs> I'm all over that. Let me grab my car keys and we'll roll. We still going to that new bar downtown? Yeah, it's supposed to be fun. Lexi, give me driving directions from home to downtown bar district. Auto correct. Suggest Uber. Pick up. Home. Drop off downtown bar district. No, I'm driving. Suggest the metro bus. Departing in 12 minutes. Huh. Point taken, Lexi. We'll grab a ride. If you drink, don't drive. Decide to ride. Brought to you in partnership by Anheuser Busch, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, and Uber. Every day, Central Valley Ag Cooperative works with our farmers to feed the globe. Embracing the cooperative spirit, CVA's innovative products and services in grain, agronomy, feed, and energy deliver world class value to our members. Our planet is hungry. Together, we feed it. Learn how we grow agriculture together at cvacoop.com. Central Valley Ag, the official co op of Husker Nation. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates apply and may vary by carrier. Do you want your date to wait for your interlock device to let you drive? Your kids to ask why you have an ankle bracelet? Or your boss to see your criminal history? Do you want to miss important life events because of house arrest? Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. 
We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres. It's the Midwest premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Tuesday night. 402-413-2400, the number to dot us up with a comment or question. We had some requests in the YouTube chat during the break. For, for the worm? Andrew, for Andrew to, to attempt the worm, because Andrew's such a t multi guy. Yeah, he claims guy. to be such a good athlete, yet he just tried the worm, and it was not a good look. not pretty? Yeah, so. So Ben Stilley has got him. Ben Stilley definitely beat Andrew. Okay. So of all the claims that Andrew has to be an All-American, definitely not in the worm. Okay. The worm is a bust. <laughs> you know, uh, we, 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 I mean, think about this show. We've talked about the Harlem Shake. <laughs> With Jeremiah. Now we've talked about the worm tonight. We're going to talk about the Macarena before the show's over. I mean, hit all three of the. Do you know the dance, the, Greg? I used to be able to do the Macarena, but now I. I'd love to see you do the Macarena. I attempted it in like 10 years, but. I mean, hey, DJ, can we get that beat? <laughs> <laughs> and have we got a date for Tim's head being shaved? Have we got a date locked in for that to happen? He, I think he'll do it. Especially if Garrett Nelson walks in here with clippers. Ty Robinson could be yeah, very persuasive. Yeah, and Ty Robinson. <laughs> yeah. Be very persuasive. For sure. Let's head to the phones. Oklahoma Husker, you're up next. Good evening. Hey, good evening, Greg and Jessica. One day closer to Ireland. You bet. Oklahoma calling back. That's right. My question is about Casey Thompson. I've had the opportunity to visit with a few Texas fans here in Oklahoma and asked them about Casey. Their major concern with him was he tended to throw the deep ball more often than he did focus on short yard gainage on reception. So what's your perception on what he's done so far in practice? I understand he's a year older now and a new coaching staff, so I'm curious what your take is. I think they've been very pleased with Casey. I think we've heard Scott Frost say it's his job to lose. I think he's done a very good job. I think he's healthy, took care of some, some uh, hand issues that he had in the off season. So I think, for the most part, they're very pleased with Casey. Yeah, I think he definitely was not healthy at the end of last year and even maybe, you know, battled through some of it in the spring. I think he feels really good, and I think he's he loves this offense. He really does, from what I understand, talking to him and – it just seems like he really feels at home in this offense and likes the different options. And I think he's going to do whatever he – I think he's a, an excellent reader of what is given to him from what I've seen. And so whether that be short, long, whatever that might be. But I think, again, with Whipple and everything that he can do, you're going to see a little bit of everything. And whatever it calls for in certain play calls in any given situations, I think he'll be able to deliver. I think the biggest thing is he feels good. He had, as Coach Frost said, when he met with the media a week or so ago, that he had some cleanup surgery on the hand after spring ball. That's totally healed. And he, he feels good, got the good grip on the football. People forget that you go back to last September, one of the hottest quarterbacks in the country was Casey Thompson. He got off to a great start at Texas. Absolutely. I mean, and just even still, despite Texas's record, look at his numbers good. and yeah. the amount of yards he threw for it. It was kind of a circus there down there at Texas and internally and you know again I don't think he he was not healthy at all and and that Oklahoma game was what game four yes five it was not it was not later on in the season so you're talking about someone that played a lot of the season basically hurt and so for him to you know battle through that and then again now finally feeling healthy I, I just I think he really is appreciative because with Texas the staff that he played for wasn't who recruited him and then he was having to win the battle every week and then was not healthy and so i just think he's very appreciative of the opportunity as here and i think he's really excited about the weapons around him the offense and um you got to imagine there if there is a one player which i there will be many but if there's one player that's fired up to play oklahoma It'll casey thompson <laughs> yeah dad. dad obviously with long time ties uh, for the Sooners. But yeah, I think, you know, he, it just felt like he needed to have a change of scenery, and I think that will do him well. Fresh start, new offensive coordinator coming in, kind of felt like, all right, I'm going to be learning this offense with everybody else with Mark Whipple, and I think that was appealing to him, and I think so far he's really adapted well to, uh, to Lincoln and to Coach Whipple. Yeah, and I think he 
Marcus Washington's here, which we've heard his name, and that's the guy he's comfortable with, but he's really click with Trey Palmer, and Trey Palmer is going to be a problem yes. for opposing defenses. I'll, sure just, I'll just leave it at that. Yep, sure is. So, all right, again, more offensive talk tomorrow night. Mark Whipple will meet with the media after tomorrow's practice. Can't wait to hear his take on the scrimmage from this past Saturday. We got all the defensive talk on Monday, so offense tomorrow night here on the program. I want to tell you about a couple of ticket plans being offered up by Husker Athletics. One's called OU Plus Two Mini Plan. Gives you a ticket to the Oklahoma game, two tickets to the North Dakota game, two tickets to the Georgia Southern game. It's for $270. Or a Big Ten mini plan. You get tickets to all four Big Ten home games, Indiana, Illinois, Minnesota, Wisconsin, $200 for that. If you want some more information or to go ahead and book it, you can do that by visiting huskers.com slash tickets. 402-413-2400. Back with more of the show coming up. It's time to amp up the fun now during the Ford Summer Supercharged Sales Event. Just move on up. Get great offers on select Ford vehicles, and you'll not only bring back the fun, you'll supercharge it. So stop by the Summer Supercharged Sales Event at your Ford dealer and discover how Ford can take your summer to a whole new level. Not all models, trims, or features may be available. Contact your dealer for information. Just move on up. How do you remember things? Post-it note, string around your finger, smartphone reminder? Whatever you do, remember Nebraska Pick 3 2x2 and My Day. Three great Nebraska Lottery Lotto games that are all $1 per play with drawings every day. Nebraska Pick 3 lets you choose your own bet type. 2x2 has a $22,000 top prize. And with My Day, you choose a six-digit date. Must be 19, please play responsibly. Oh, got a reminder. Produce Nebraska Lottery commercial. <laughs> I'm all over that. Greatness doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, focus, and dedication. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that because we put in the hard work and dedication for decades. And that commitment has paid off with award-winning customer service for your auto, home, and life insurance. Visit shelterinsurance.com and find an agent to help you choose the coverage you need. Shelter Insurance. We're your shield. We're your shelter. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t-shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card. Free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at fnbo.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. SOS to the rescue. SOS to the rescue. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so hot. The air conditioner is out again. SOS, he screams and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. SOS, SOS. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Thanks for calling Toyota. This is Jan. How can I help? Hi, thanks for telling my family and me about Toyota's national sales event. Oh, you're welcome. We got a new RAV4 during the event, and it's been great. Well, that makes me happy. Right now through September 6th, it is the best time to drive off in a new Camry Hybrid, Tacoma, and more. So what are you up to? You know, we took the RAV4 to a great spot. We've hiked, rafted, and now we're exploring a cave. Amazing. You're inside a cave right now? Yep. Well, I'm glad the RAV4 could make it all happen. Yeah, my wife talked me into spelunking. I'm actually a complete and absolute amateur. An absolute amateur. An absolute amateur. Huh, I could have done without the echo on that. 
Toyota's national sales event is on. Visit your participating Toyota dealer today to enjoy every last second of summer. Toyota, let's go places. See your participating Toyota dealer for details. Dealer inventory may vary. Event ends September 6th. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t-shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card. Free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at FNBO.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. Families who travel to Nebraska's only Ronald McDonald House are facing extremely uncomfortable situations. Their child is sick in an unfamiliar city, unsure of how to handle it all. But when they walk in the Ronald McDonald House, they can find comfort in the little things. A quiet moment away from the bombardment of beeps and buzzes in a hospital room. The taste of a home-cooked meal. A calming voice saying it'll be okay. Help us provide the little things that make a big difference. Support a one-night stay for a family in need by visiting rmhcomaha.org slash Huskers. Sports Highly Hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime with 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you're looking for at Woodhouse. 402-413-2400. That's the number to dial us up with a comment or question or fire off a text. Serena Williams put out a thing today saying that she's ready to wind down her marvelous career and move on to the next phase of her life. Looks like the U.S. Open, which starts later this month in New York, will be her last major tournament. 23 Grand Slams. I think we talked about her a little bit when she returned at Wimbledon a month or so ago that She's one of the most influential female athletes of all time. Absolutely. You can talk about a goat. That is a goat. And, you know, just everything that she did for that sport. I mean, that sport's not. Tennis isn't really necessarily a popular sport. No. But she made it more popular. Right. She inspired a generation. And then for her to perform it the way that she performed and to win the way that she won. And, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And then to be a mom and then to come back and do it after giving birth and right. just all of the above and I mean she's an icon no doubt. and has paved the way for a lot of young women I mean it's almost like so you hear what young golfers now that are in the tour on the tour that say they they watch Tiger Woods and Tiger Woods is their favorite and he was the one he was why they got into golf now you're starting to see a generation of tennis players that oh well Serena Williams that's why I wanted to play tennis right I remember Venus was her was her older sister. She was on the scene first, and I just remember, and she was great, and she won some slams. And her dad Richard, who that Will Smith uh, portrayed in the movie that won the Oscar before the slap, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Richard was. You had saying, to go there. Hey, well, that was too easy. <laughs> it was a lob, right? I smashed it. Uh, where Richard goes, wait till my next daughter comes up. And that was Serena. And he was right. Serena was better than Venus. And uh, pretty amazing that those two dominated the sport as long as they did. Yeah, cool. I mean, it's just, I mean, how old, what's, how old is she? 41? Oh, I had it here a minute ago. I'll look that up. I think, I, I think that could be right. Yeah, I mean, and just now kind of having to be at a point where you step away and honestly probably could have continued to compete, but she's, she's such a involved in business now and is a mom and all of the she other like things like and all this she could have kept does. kept playing but you know and yeah just absolutely instrumental in what she did not just for tennis but for just women's athletes as we continue to celebrate title nine and and the growth of women's sports she's absolutely been just so instrumental in the role model that she's been and uh, yeah you can go on and on about serena Buckle up, put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. The FedEx Cup starts this weekend in pro golf. This is kind of their playoffs. Big money uh, on the line for this. Some golfers who broke away from the PGA earlier this summer to join Liv, which is the, the tour that is backed by uh, the Saudi, uh, Saudi Arabia-backed Liv uh, tour, have filed a lawsuit in hopes of trying to get to be a part of the FedEx Cup because they had accumulated enough points before they departed the PGA 
to qualify for the FedEx Cup, which is the top 125 on the money list. Taylor Gooch, Matt Jones, Hudson Swafford took the PGA to court to try to get clearance to play in the FedEx Cup playoffs, which start Thursday in Memphis. Uh, their petition was denied by a U.S. District Court judge today, so they will not be allowed to play in this tournament. I don't know where this live story, I'm fascinated by it because I don't know where it's going to end. Um, I don't think we're near the end of this whole thing because uh, I don't think live's going away anytime soon. Uh, but it certainly has fractured that sport, and it's too bad if they keep picking off more big names. You just feel like you're not even watching the best play the best anymore. If you yeah, don't, I, I hate it. And that's what, like, what were the grounds of him denying it, the appeal? Because the Masters, the British Open, the U.S. Open, right, all allowed for the live golfers to play in. She said it appears to the court that the live contracts negotiated by these players uh, it's Judge Beth Lapson Freeman, uh, and consummated between the parties were based upon the players' calculation of what they would be leaving behind and the amount the players would need to monetize to compensate for those losses. I do agree with the PGA Tour that those losses were well known to the players at the time and clearly monetized. So she said, you know what, they knew what they were getting in for by signing this deal, and so they forfeited their right to be a PGA Tour player by joining this other league. So that's her interpretation probably will get appealed, move up to a higher court. So Yeah, I just, I don't know, I hate it, because again, like you said, and, and not even just like the best golfers, but also like some of the bigger names have already no DJ. jumped ship. Yeah. I know I'm a huge DJ fan, so of course I would go to DJ, but you know, there's a lot of big name golfers that you tune into to see what they're doing, and I, I don't know, it's just um, the fact that you could watch the British Open and see all those they guys. They were all there. Yes. Yeah. So it just doesn't make much sense that they wouldn't be in the FedEx Cup. So Let's uh, head to the phones. Jonathan up in Omaha joins us next. Good evening, Jonathan. Evening, guys. How you doing? Good. So, okay, I know people have been talking about the Live Golf Tour versus the PGA, and uh, I'm not saying anything about the Saudis personally and what they do in a political sense. I'm just talking strictly in a, a competitive sense, business-wise, fiscal, whatever. Uh, I think it's great for golf. I think golf needs yes. a little bit of a spark of competition. I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, the Monday Night Wars back in the days of pro wrestling, WCW versus WWF. They were on the same night, and granted, it, pro wrestling is not a sport, uh, but it made for amazing television and wrestling uh, and just having that competition. It was the difference is they were fighting for their lives and their jobs. I get it. But uh, I think this is good for golf. It'd be nice if they kind of just put their differences aside. I get there's a lot of money involved. But I mean, there's no such thing as bad publicity when it comes to competition, I suppose. What's your guys' take on that? I a thousand percent agree with you, Jonathan. And I've been saying this. I have a good friend that's a caddy on the tour and he said this will be good for golf there's been some things that have needed to be changed within the PGA Tour for a long time they've been doing things the same way they're the only professional sport that the way that their revenues are shared that their athletes don't get a certain percentage compared to the NBA NFL MLB all of it they get significantly lower than the other leagues uh, the way they treat their caddies literally everything i mean so i a thousand percent agree this can only improve the sport of golf and i think a lot of these players have made that decision to do that to improve the sport and the game again putting all of the political stuff aside and and the stuff of the saudis just trying to improve the game because this is the only way that it grows is with a competition that can push it in a way and and so I, I am a hundred and thousand percent with you, Jonathan. And the interesting thing is the PGA has already tweaked a couple things that they do. Which wouldn't the, have never been done. Exactly right. It, unless these guys made the split, they would not have made some changes in the last month or so to limit some fields later in the year, bigger purses for the guys. The, the money's there. And they, I think these players are kind of going, the money's there. It's, and the PGA is really good about giving to charitable causes, and I'm all for that. That's fine, too. They're also too. really good about giving to their people that run the show. That's exactly right. <laughs> so, I, you know, these guys will never be treated as people that helped advance the sport, but I think they will, in the end, advance the sport. I, uh, yes, I agree. And, again, 
make one of our arguments, and I won't get into that about you know where it's coming from. But the fact is, there was never an opportunity to provide some competition, and the P so the PGA stood their ground. And so now here you have again, maybe not necessarily a bunch of players. There are a few, but you know a bunch of players that are competing for to win every single week right they don't necessarily have a lot of those they have a couple or two or three but they have a lot of big name dudes that have now joined that uh that tour that is pushing the envelope and golf ratings have grown significantly i mean it is crazy how much golf ratings have grown and so you know to have something that pushes the envelope and and forces a PGA to change that have been stuck in their ways for years and years and years, it needed to come. And so I, I'm with you. I think it's a positive and I think it will only grow. And heck yeah, let's see WWE versus NWO. Is that what it is? Yeah, I mean, there was, there were, <laughs> wrestling went through it. The, the pro basketball went through it, the ABA and the NBA. Football went through it, the AFL and the NFL, and they merged and they played this game called the Super Bowl, which has turned into a pretty big deal. So, Sports has gone through these battles before, and they'll survive this. I just hope that it never comes to where when I sit down to watch the Masters or the PGA or the U.S. Open or the British Open that I'm not seeing the best of the best. And they go, nope, you can't play in this because you're on live. I, don't, I hope it doesn't ever come to that. And I'm not so sure. As much as you know, people have made it about money, I'm not so sure that these players that – I know the history with Phil Mickelson and his gambling and all of that, but some of these players, I'm not so sure if they wouldn't come back and if they had some of these changes that they've been asking for, if some of those changes were made and forfeit some of that money. You know, in, in terms of growing the game, making it better, I'm not so sure they would just come back if the PGA would agree to hearing some of the terms that they, they want to hear. I don't think it's like they're done and gone for good. I don't believe. No, I, I, I think that if the PJ would be open to growing and changing and hearing some of their, you know, arguments, then maybe they'd come back and the live wouldn't survive if that were the case. Well, the three players in that lawsuit aren't exactly household names. Taylor Gooch, Matt Jones, Hudson Swafford. If you follow golf, you probably know who they are, but those are not household names at all in golf that did, did, did try to work their way. They all three had qualified for the FedEx Cup playoffs. Gooch was 30th on the money list, but because they left, they're not allowed to come back and play. Starting It'll be person. interesting to see what the ratings are for this True. without some of those names. Because Phil There's... Mickelson, I mean, as much as he hasn't won, he's a massive name. Is. Dustin Johnson is a big name. And, you know, um, some of he these is. players that have got a pretty big following that have added to that big-time TV money, TV viewership, What's that going to look like now? Now that this is actually a big time tournament, big time. This is the first one that we're seeing where these names, these Aren't golfers, they? are not going to be right. on television in this tournament. Be to see if they dip off a little bit yeah. with the numbers. Yeah. Because you go back to the Open that you referenced that was won by Cam Smith, and the top 20 players in that leaderboard, I think four or five of them were live players yes. that were on the top 20. So those are four or five of the top 20 players in the world. Lee Westwood being one of those. DJ was way up there in the rankings. I think even Patrick Reed finished in the top 20 at the Open. So, all right, fascinating story. I, those kind of things intrigue me again because I don't know where it's going to go, but I'm certainly going to be locked in to follow that. 402-413-2400. Jonathan, thank you for the phone call. Uh, and that, that number works as our, line, our Woodhouse Auto Family Sports Nightly Hotline. It's also our text line as well. Back to wrap it up next. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride. The official foundation company of the Huskers. Does your business need quick, competitive financing for heavy machinery, trucks, or other equipment? Currency is here to help. Whether you're financing construction equipment, farm equipment, trucks, trailers, or any other big ticket item, Currency will automatically find the best rates. Currency facilitates loans for up to $500,000 
with repayment terms up to 72 months. It's fast, easy, and free to use. Visit GoCurrency.com and apply today. Families who travel to Nebraska's only Ronald McDonald House are facing extremely uncomfortable situations. Their child is sick in an unfamiliar city, unsure of how to handle it all. But when they walk in the Ronald McDonald House, they can find comfort in the little things. A quiet moment away from the bombardment of beeps and buzzes in a hospital room. The taste of a home-cooked meal. A calming voice saying it'll be okay. Help us provide the little things that make a big difference. Support a one-night stay for a family in need by visiting rmhcomaha.org slash huskers. At Nebraska, our people will always be our greatest asset. Day by day, donors give our teams the best opportunity to compete and win through their generous donations. Our vision for the future is ambitious and requires help from those who want to see Husker athletics excel at the highest level. Go big and join thousands of other Huskers Athletic Fund members with your gift today at huskers.com slash donate. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska is proud to support Husker athletics. Having a competent teammate beside you makes all the difference when it comes to protecting what matters most. With a proven track record of dependable coverage, unmatched financial strength, and a prompt claim service team right here in Nebraska, that's insurance kept local. Visit FMNE.com to contact an agent for a quote today. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. Here's to the locals, raised right here in the Western Corn Belt. The strong ones. We help them grow stronger, making world-class genetics, research, and technology local. The cutting-edge yet common-sense agronomy. The shake up yields. Because we're born and raised here, too. And we'll keep raising the bar to ensure you only get the best at Hogemeyer. Raise local, raised right here. Learn more at therightseed.com. 402-413-2400, the number if you want to be a part of the program in the last couple of minutes here of our Tuesday night show. Again, our next Tuesday night, this time... It'll be our first volleyball show of the year with John Cook. Huskers began practice today. They had two practice sessions today. They're still allowed to do two a days in the sports of volleyball and soccer, not football, but volleyball and soccer. And so uh, two practices today. They'll have two more tomorrow. So next Tuesday night, John Cook will start his radio shows. Primarily will be on Tuesdays throughout the fall. They do have some Wednesday road matches where they'll be traveling. Some of those weeks will bump the show over to Thursday. But for the most part, it'll be a Tuesday night show. Football shows will be on Thursday. Those start next week. I told the boys earlier today, Jessica, that this is the last week for about the next nine months where we won't have a coach's show. Yeah, and right? then you think about next Saturday is the red and white scrimmage. Yep. So it's like, that's it's here. And, then, and fan day. Yes, and then that Sunday, because of the way that travel to Ireland, we'll have the oh our gosh. first press conference, and then we'll be on the road. We'll That's be flying. from Sunday, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so they're going to bump the press conference up a day because of the team's going to travel on Monday to fly across the pond, as they say, to get to Ireland. It's going to be old home week for you. You've been there. You know the lay of the <laughs> land. You'll be going, all right, we go down this street to get there. We go over here. I, I only retained it. I was there for like 48 hours, and I was sleep deprived <laughs> for the first <laughs> 32, so... The whole key uh, is when you get there, you got to fight your way to nighttime and then get on their clock right away. Yeah, it is. I think... I can't remember. I think it is easier coming back than it is going there. Do you? Yes. That's what I, I've been told, is that uh, the adjustment's easier when we come back than it is going there. But, yeah, we'll see. Either way, it's six-hour difference. And, wow. And you're going to be there longer this time. Yes. Yeah. So I've, I'll be able to adjust. Hey, Nebraska 811 says go dig red. Before you dig, always call or click 811 to have your utility lines marked. It's free, it's easy, it's the law. Then a practice report tomorrow night. Mark Whipple will talk to the media. We'll get his take about the scrimmage that took place on Saturday and how's the offense doing. All that will break it down for you tomorrow night. Have a great night. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts.
The Ford truck lineup is purpose-built from the ground up, designed to be tough and productive. Crafted with high-strength, military-grade aluminum alloy body and torture-tested high-strength steel frame with new tech to help you work smart and hard. The F-150, Ranger, and Maverick are built tough and ready to tackle whatever lies ahead. Hit the road in confidence and learn more about Ford trucks in-store or online anytime at WoodhouseFord.com. Your trusted truck dealer since 1975. Woodhouse Ford. Save with low price lockdown from High V. We've locked down prices on hundreds of your favorite everyday items. Prices are locked down for months and months on major leading name brands. The products that you like, the products that you want, and products that you'll want to stock up on. And all of the prices are locked down until we unlock them and lower them even more. Low price lockdown. Deals you can't beat anywhere. Only at High V. Lines up with a shotgun, claps his hands, gets a shotgun snap, looks right, throws right, passes, caught, short of the first down. Oh, what a play, made on the edge by Luke Reimer, brings him down at the 46, Nebraska will take over there. What a play by Reimer. Hey Huskers fans, tomorrow join us on Sports Nightly from 6 to 8 p.m. as we break down another Nebraska football fall camp practice report. Tune in to your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska is proud to support Husker Athletics. Having a competent teammate beside you makes all the difference when it comes to protecting what matters most. With the proven track record of dependable coverage, unmatched financial strength, and a prompt claim service team right here in Nebraska, that's insurance kept local. Visit FMNE.com to contact an agent for a quote today.